The largest group of plant pathogens are the fungi and fungi-like organisms. The fungi-like organisms were originally classified as fungi, but have subsequently been broken out into their own group, and we usually refer to these kind of informally as water molds. Again, this is the largest group of plant pathogens. There are more than roughly 8,000 different organisms in this particular group that can cause disease. And keep in mind that there are lots of additional fungi that are out in the environment that do not cause plant diseases, but there's a large group of the fungi and fungi-like organisms that do. What I like about the fungi is that they are relatively large compared to the other types of disease-causing organisms that we're going to be discussing today, and they can oftentimes be seen with the naked eye. If you've ever been in the grocery store and walked by those mushrooms in the vegetable section, those are fungi, and so as you can tell, again, those are relatively large. A lot of the ones, though, that I tend to look at when I'm looking at disease-causing organisms tend to be microscopic, and I do need to use a microscope to see at least some of the structures that I need to see in order to identify them. Fungi can grow in a couple of different ways. Usually in their day-to-day -day growth, we call this vegetative growth, and they do this through production typically of structures called hyphae. Singular is hypha without the E. And these are basically long thread-like structures that form the main body of the fungus. Typically these structures are multicellular, so you'll actually be able to see many cells within a given thread. And these can be quite extensive and grow over a large area. Fungi then can go into a reproductive mode and they can reproduce in a couple of different ways. In both methods, they produce what are called spores. These are seed-like structures, which are basically a propagative unit for the fungus. And these can be produced either asexually or sexually. In asexual reproduction, you can think of this as being similar to a cloning sort of process. If you take one of the spores that's produced by this method and grow up a fungus, the fungus that you get is genetically identical to that mother fungus that produced the spore. In sexual reproduction, it's kind of like humans having kids. Basically, you need two individuals of the fungus that find each other in the environment. They merge, they exchange genetic material, and then there's a spore production process after that. And the spores that are produced here, if you grow up a fungus from sexual reproduction, the fungus that you get from that spore is genetically distinct from either of the two parents. So it's kind of, again, like us having kids, your kids have the characteristics partly of mom and partly of dad. 